welcome to my channel. My name is Nikki. Um, I'm doing a voiceover because this video got completely out of control. But um, I'm going to be doing a ring pour using milk paint. And all the paints that I'm using, the metallic blue is Anita's and the rest of the color that I'm using are by Apple Barrel. Um, I'll list them in the description box. I can't remember the names of all of them. But I'm going to use milk paint that's been mixed one-to-one -one with um, Artist Loft Flow Acrylic. And then thin one-to-one with a pour medium. Um, I did this first ring pour. Kind of alternated ring pour and then a straight pour. Um, and you'll see that it didn't come out the way I wanted it to come out. Normally when I do um, pours with milk paint, I will torch after I pour and then um, stretch my paints around. I didn't do that this time. I thought I was going to be smart and try something different. <laughs> and it just didn't work. You will see that um, it just didn't make the cells that I'm used to milk paint making um, and I was pretty disappointed <laughs> but I poured that ring of milk paint around the outer circle because normally that will help create um, even more cells but it just wasn't happening and I thought initially I thought that it was because I didn't torch but um, maybe it was that I just didn't have enough milk paint in the cup. Um, in, in relation to how much of the other paint I had. So, whatever the case might have been, I was not getting the cloud effect that I'm used to milk paint giving me. Um, I could see it trying to pop through, but... It really was struggling. Um, I'm pointing out I see a few places where the the milk paint was coming through, but really not much, y'all. So I'm covering my corners, and I'm thinking like, do I just scrape this painting? <laughs> what can I do to save this? Because I've already done like four paintings that night, and none of them had turned out the way I had anticipated. I had washed my canvases, and I was really like. I'm ready to go to bed, but I want one successful pour. So what can I do? Is there anything I can do to save this? Um, so I had extra paint and I, I do this. It's, it's not uncommon if I don't like the way a, a painting goes. I'll just pour something else over that without scraping it to see if it'll, you know, if I can get something better. Um, so I'm torching away, the cells aren't coming up, and I'm just like, I was just like, meh, nothing's working. And I actually read in the comments, um, a lady commented that milk paint doesn't like heat. Um, so maybe the next time I do a pour with milk paint, I'll leave the torch out and see if the way it dries is different than how you know the appearance whenever I I do use a heat gun so at this point I'm just like you know what this canvas is not okay so I'm going to do another ring pour um, on top of this painting I didn't put any purple or green in this just because there's so much of those two colors already on the canvas but I went ham with the milk paint I poured it to it um, <laughs> as you can see and I just did the same type, ring pour, then straight pour, ring pour, straight pour. Um, so, you can already see that the milk paint is reacting, um, coming through. It's, it's performing the way I'm used to it performing. And there I go with the torch gun. <laughs> and um, all the cells, just all, I'm like, just give me all the cells. So, I... Um, I was like, yes. <laughs> so I'm just stretching my paint out. Because there was so much paint on the canvas, I had to really um, 
get that excess off. And the thing with milk paint is the more you move it around, it's so thin that it mixes with the other colors more easily. And um, if you look towards the bottom, there's that band that's kind of getting a little bit muddy. Um, and it's just from how much paint I had on the canvas. And it's that's just not attractive to me. So... I torched again to see if I could get some more cells because that was a lot of pink in the center and um, I wanted to see if I could get some more cells to pop up and of course I did <laughs> um, milk paint is very reactive to heat um, so I want to get that muddy bit off as much as I can um, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just going to tilt it more and see if I can get it off. And I did get a good bit of it off. Um, and yeah, so I'm starting to like it a little better than I did with that, that portion on the canvas. And I'm just moving it around trying to get my paints to the center, the weight of my paint to the center. Um... There's still, on the right-hand side, there's still some, you can see where that area is kind of going gray. So I'm going to go in with my heat gun and see if I could get more cells to pop up um, in that area. I just focused on that area and try to camouflage some of that gray. Um, and it worked pretty good. You just have to be careful not to get too close or to concentrate too heavily on a certain area or it will burn it. But, um, oh, I had a flow trawl boogie. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm liking this way better than the initial pour. Um, which goes to show, you know, everybody has bad days when it comes to painting. I see so many young painters, um, commenting that they poured 10 pours and none of them work. It's just proof that, you know, just keep trying. Everybody has bad days. So I'm just tilting and getting the weight of the paint distributed. And I will take you down and I will show you close-ups um, in another clip as soon as I get this station clean because it's pretty messy and you can't really see the painting very well. All right, so I've got my space cleaned up and this is the close-up of what the pour looks like. I'll take you down. So I think it's really pretty. Anyway. Alright. Thank you guys for stopping by my channel. And I hope you all have a good night evening, morning, day, wherever you are. All right. Bye.